Business, where we interview inspiring businesswomen and entrepreneurs. I'm Susie Daphnis of the Australian Business Women's Network. My guest today is Roma Gaster of the Leadership Circle, a leadership development consultancy that works with breakthrough tools to empower leaders. In this interview, we discuss the five traits of successful leaders. We look at how perfectionism holds us back and why today's economy demands that women step up to their role as leaders. Enjoy this interview with Roma Gaster. Roma, hi and welcome. Susie, lovely to talk to you. Today we're talking about leadership and more specifically we're going to focus in on women and leadership. But let's start off by talking about what the Leadership Circle, your organisation, is. Well, the Leadership Circle, Susie, actually offers um, a number of different kinds of survey instruments and workshops and really is um, the purpose is to assist leaders through this today's times, which is constant change, complexity, uncertainty, managing so many in stakeholder interests, which seems to become the new normal for people. And what, what in my experience, what I find is happening is that leaders, because of the speed of change and the speed of busyness mm -hmm. in business, that they're actually missing the conversations that they're really hungry to have and, and often don't know that they're longing for it. And the leadership circle facilitates a doorway to open up those conversations so that they can actually um, start manifesting and, you know, start creating extraordinary relationships and extraordinary results. Mm -hmm. That it's make a difference. It yeah? sounds a little bit like it can be lonelier at the top than perhaps we think. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and and I don't think it needs to be that way. But I think that, you know, it, throughout the, the way that systems and organizations are structured, it actually leaves uh, leaders exposed at the top. Let's talk specifically about women because what I understand is that our approach to leadership and our expectations of ourselves are a little bit different. So tell me, why is it that women often feel they need to be a perfect, infallible kind of leader? Uh, it's uh, Look, it's, it's also one. It's one that I've actually – I know that one very well, Susie. <laughs> so, um, and it's, it's this it's – we see it as a compensating pattern or a or or a way of us being able to you know take care of everything because we believe that that is the expectation so it is actually a deep seated belief that unless i am perfect at home with the family in any environment and at work then i'm not worthwhile or i'm not safe or i'm not secure so you know, we often talk about them as compensating patterns or, you know, it's just the way that we cope and we deal with it. And, of course, it's a recipe for stress. Mm. So how do we embrace knowing that we're not perfect and yet continue to grow and evolve as a leader? Well, I, I think that the, the, the key thing for me personally and the way that, that seems to work with leaders that I work with who actually have what we call a perfect perfectionistic drive or a spike – um, is to is to discern, is to discern and to make the distinction about when is something, when does something require to be 100%? And when is it, let's say it's a draft document. Mm -hmm. Well, then what is the point in actually sweating over, you know, all the grammar and all the spelling errors and whatever? It's like that process of continuous improvement. And so perfect, perfectionism actually comes with enormous gifts but it doesn't take long for the gift to become a compulsive drive that is um at, at it we're compensating for something in terms of our self-worth and so the leadership circle has a very uh, specific way of helping people to acknowledge strengths and gifts but also to get in underneath what are the beliefs and assumptions that we're making if we're not perfect so that's the way to embrace it is to look at what are the gifts and then look at what, what's the price we pay for it. 
Now does you, that make sense? It, it does. Yes, it does. And obviously, it's a deeper uh, subject than we're able to to cover today. But it's that fighting against our true selves, our real, uh, where we're really great, you know, and getting caught up in these uh, ideas of, of perfection. But some of us break through, and some of us are very successful <laughs> leaders who who don't have these uh, this craziness about us. What are some of the traits <laughs> that make those leaders who are successful successful? Uh, there are actually really well researched leadership competencies that are common um, and highly correlated to leadership effectiveness in the eyes of others as well as extraordinary business performance. And there are actually only five that okay. the research has come up with. So it's not, you know, 200 or 300 <laughs> or whatever. Um, those have their own. Um, additional sets of competencies, but the competencies really are the ability to, to be able to achieve results yeah, together with the capacity to relate to people and engage people in order to be able to achieve the results and the vision and the purpose and the future direction. So those are two keys, achieving and relating. But today we also have high expectations of our leaders that they show up with authenticity. You know, okay. that they're real, that, they, that they, they're courageous and they're real and they have values. And then, of course, we also expect our leaders to be able to have high self-awareness. You know, that the impact that they're having on other people by what they say or what they do. And the last one is systems awareness. So there, there are five. It's achieving, relating, self-awareness systems awareness and authenticity. Very good. Now, the area of wisdom is one that comes into your work. Tell yeah. us a little bit about what you mean by wisdom and why is tapping into and cultivating wisdom important for women leaders? Uh, you know, I the think that once upon a time, people used to say that, you know, wisdom comes with age. And, and I, I don't know about you, but I certainly, I'm certainly experiencing that as I get older, I, I feel like I'm having the capacity to tap into something I didn't have access to when I was younger. Um, and I see kids, I see babies, I see young children, my niece and nephews, you know, with this enormous wisdom. And, and so it, it's... To me, wisdom is the capacity to be able to trust the inner guide, the voice that says this is the right thing to do for the right reasons at this point in time. And many leaders have that capacity. All I believe all of us have that capacity. But the voice gets very quiet because there are so many things going on in our head and we're so busy and we're meeting so many different deadlines and in so many different meetings that unless we slow down and unless we sit in some kind of silence for a while, that voice doesn't get a chance to be heard. So the importance for women leaders, is there a particular reason why tapping into that is more important or less important for women leaders or doesn't really matter? Uh, my personal view mm -hmm. is that uh, we all need it, and whether we, and and it's and it's and and it's drawing on the feminine and the masculine energy in in all of us, whether we're, whether we are in female form or male form, is the capacity, and I believe that that really is true wisdom, is the capacity to be able to see the whole, and to draw on the feminine and the masculine energies which give us slightly you know like you for you could you could argue that achieving results and the energy that it takes is quite a masculine yang type of energy and you could argue that you know the relating piece is more of the feminine energy and we require both it's no longer an either or equation and i think that that's where leaders get into trouble is that we still think in binary terms we still think in black and white that what what worked for us in the past is going to be the recipe to help us in the future. And, of course, times have changed. There's so much complexity. It's no longer a guarantee that what worked for us in the past is going to work for us in the future. So some of the things we're talking about, I know that some of the women who work in large corporations may find a little soft. We're 
seeing a lot of women, a lot of talk about women on boards and women on ASX boards and the Governor General even recommending quotas to get more women on boards appointed. Um, let me ask you first, do we have or do you have a position on this issue about quotas of numbers of women on boards? Yeah, I do. And I believe that it's a, it is a function of the consciousness and the awareness. Um, I, I Look, if, if it's the only way that we can raise awareness to have a diversity of voices, whether it be on a board or in this or, or in leadership teams or right. in teams, Susie, mm -hmm. I think that it's the diversity of voice that brings the capacity for us to deal with the complexity and the speed of change and the none of us know all the answers today. It's impossible. And so having women on boards or leadership teams or other teams, um, if the intent is to bring diversity of views as well as capability, then I think that that's the right intent. When we're looking at leadership and a lot of our audience listening and a lot of the women that I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis are leaders within their own organisations. Now, sometimes they're an organisation of one, sometimes of five, sometimes of 50, but they're generally in smaller businesses. Do you look at leadership and women's roles as leaders different in a corporate environment than in business ownership? Um, well, I've been, I've been both, mm -hmm. right? And I think that you, you, you and I both have. And, and in many ways, a, a, a single owner um, has meant more hats to wear, many more hats to wear. And so it's, I don't look at it as being different. It's just, it, the, the environment is different. The functionality can be different. But the the, what it does to us and the way that we make meaning of things um, can be – is exactly the same. In other words, the attitudes that we need to bring to it, the beliefs and assumptions we need to bring to it, the wisdom we need to bring to it is the same. Mm. I wonder though, and I'll just expand on this question, whether uh, the – the awareness of a need to be a better leader is as obvious when you run a small team that you probably manage all yourself than if you're looking to climb a corporate ladder. Are the skills mm. you're saying that we should be developing the same, regardless? Um, coming back to what you asked me before about, you know, are there some key areas are there some key competencies for leadership mm. and if we if we come to the core essence then i believe that the core essence is that if we actually have the capacity to achieve results relate and engage with people mm. regardless of whether we've got teams mm. that we have high levels of self-awareness so that we do manage the stress regardless of the environment we're in that we have the capacity to connect dots across systems and we need to do that as small business owners mm. and that we actually have the courage to have the conversations that are sometimes difficult to have, but base them on our values, then um, I think you're right. Yes, of course, in a, in a, in a, with a small business owner, it's, it's challenging. It's, I mean, it's super challenging. Um, and, in, and in large organizations, it comes with its own set of problems and its own set of complexities and the speed is unbelievable. You've given us, um, I think, the argument for why leadership development, whether it's individual or within organisations, uh, needs to be a focus in today's economy. So that being said, um, is there anything else you'd like to leave us with? Unless we're working on our own development, and I mean on, our, on the way in which we see things, the beliefs that we have. Like, for example, being perfect is the only way I am going to be seen as worthwhile and that I'm going to be safe and secure. Unless we can deal with our beliefs and assumptions that, that keep us small and keep us in stress, then it's really difficult for us to actually 
move into a different form of awareness, an awareness which I think that the, the, the awareness that, that women have the capacity to bring and the wisdom that women have the capacity to bring is the journey that we're talking about, that the inner journey, noticing my own beliefs and assumptions and my own self-talk and the outer journey which helps us move from me, the individual, to we, the collective. And I believe that that's where we need to move to today. That as long as the focus is on me, then we will miss the opportunities for collective collaboration, for innovation, for sharing um, the load, and for asking for support and the courage that it takes to do that. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Roma Gaster of The Leadership Circle. Thank you, Susie. My pleasure. Thanks for listening. I trust you enjoyed this interview with Roma Gaster of The Leadership Circle. For more information, visit www.theleadershipcircle.com. And for more interviews with inspiring women, visit our website at www.abn.org. If you're listening to this episode of Her Business on iTunes, we'd love it if you would leave us a review. Thanks again for listening.